Price of eggs, have you heard, has skyrocketed. Prices have quadrupled in about six or seven months. In California, egg costs surged to a whopping $7.37. This Manhattan grocery store where a dozen organic jumbo eggs cost nearly $10. There's been a lot of talk in the news lately about expensive eggs, and it might have you wondering if it's time to start your own backyard flock of chickens. But before you start counting your eggs, let's talk about what it's really like to raise chicken here in Alaska. To keep things simple, I'm gonna break this review into three categories. Cost, benefits and the ugly truce. <laughs> this is one of the most expensive eggs in the world, the Alaskan chicken egg, and here's why. Just like human food, chicken food comes in all types. It's going to depend on if you buy in bulk, but we found the cheapest feed around here was $32.99 for 50 pounds. If you're looking for feed that is organic or non-GMO, be prepared to pay almost double that with a 35 pound bag going for $36.99, which is over a dollar per pound. For us though, the point of starting our small homestead was to produce animal products of the highest nutritional value for our family and friends, while also giving our animals the best life possible, and we're grateful to be able to do that. Here in Alaska, keeping chickens warm and hydrated can cost a bit more. We use a heated water to keep their water from freezing, which means we have to run power to the coop and pay extra electricity. We also had to add two 300 watt heat lamps to the coop during the coldest months because let's just say the radiant heaters left our chickens feeling a little frosty. Heat is probably the most expensive part of owning chicken up north, but unless you're getting temperatures of around negative 20 Fahrenheit for weeks at a time, you won't need them. When it comes to housing your chickens, they don't need a mansion. A cozy coop with enough room for each bird to roost and about 10 square feet per bird to stretch their legs during the day can be perfect. You can buy a pre-made coop for a few hundred bucks or build yourself one for more or less depending on lumber prices in your area. We started with a smaller pre-made coop, but once our chickens got snowed in a few times, we ended up converting our greenhouse into their new playground. But now it's time to talk about some of the foul truths about raising backyard chicken. It's not exactly Chanel number no. 5, but don't worry, it's not as bad as you might think, as long as you keep it under control. Think of their bedding like a giant diaper that soaks up the mess and smell, and then transforms into the best fertilizer around. But we'll come back to that. Whenever the coop starts to smell, I just follow the moron method. If it stinks, throw more on. Then you do a full clean out before and after the winter months, and you'll be set. Chickens aren't super needy creatures, but they do have a few specific expectations, we could say. There are daily tasks like letting them out, giving them treats, and collecting eggs. Thank you, ma'am. Then there are weekly tasks like filling feeders and waters. And lastly, there's annual tasks like completely cleaning out their coop after seven months of winter. <laughs> It will depend on the systems you establish, but just remember these chores need to be done when they need to be done, even on holidays and 45 below zero. And if you're someone who likes taking lots of vacations, you may want to give it some extra thought or track down a reliable chicken sitter. This is the infamous Olaf. <laughs> We've only ever had one rooster, which is Olaf here, so we can only speak to what it was like to have him around. We actually didn't even want a rooster, but through a mix-up at the feed store, we ended up with one anyway. When he was just a few weeks old, he got sick, so I nursed him back to health, and he used to be one of the most personable birds, until he hit puberty. At first, Olaf acted a little odd around the wife and kids, and then one day Charlie was running around with an egg in her hand, and Olaf attacked her. He's remained aggressive with them ever since, and it's put a bit of a damper on chicken time with the family. From what our friends have told us, sometimes there are relaxed roosters, and sometimes there are extra protective roosters, so be ready for that. As you might imagine, living in a place where you get enough snow to build a snowman taller than Shaquille O'Neal can cause problems for your feathered friends. After the first major snow and ice storm collapsed the tarp roof, our chicken were not too keen on coming out of the coop. You could try to shovel the snow every day and lay down straw for them to walk on, but that is a ton of work and uses up a lot of straw, which isn't cheap these days. This was one of the biggest lessons learned for us, and I would not keep chickens again without a roofed chicken run. Unfortunately, chicken can be a lot like toddlers with feathers. And what I mean by that is they're prone to getting sick, and if you're not careful, things can go downhill really fast. Even if you do everything right, your chicken might still develop a life-threatening illness that needs immediate attention. But don't worry, it's not all doom and gloom. With a little bit of research and chicken TLC, you can nurse them back to health and enjoy the rewards of a happy, healthy flock. Speaking of rewards, let's talk about the benefits of backyard chicken, and the first one that's probably on everyone's mind right now is eggs. 
Because of the electricity costs and high quality feed, they are expensive, but you will not find anything like this at the supermarket. These eggs were laid today. They're absolutely packed with nutrition, and I know exactly where they came from. With seven one-year-old hens, we get about four to six eggs per day from April through September. I do want to point out though that egg production slows way down when the light changes for winter. During the colder months, we only get one to two eggs per day, and most times they explode before we can get to them, which means chicken are sort of like very expensive outdoor cats for almost half the year. Now let's talk manure, folks. Yes, it might sound gross and you may be tempted to just throw this brown gold away, but hear me out. These feathered beauties are like little fertilizer factories and all you have to do is mix their manure with some high carbon material like hay or wood chips. You can even throw in your table scraps and the chicken will use those too. This is the easiest form of compost to make in my opinion. No temperatures, no turning, just toss some scratch treats on the ground and let the chickens do the heavy lifting for you. About six months to a year later, and you'll have some of the best compost in the neighborhood. When you have chickens, you'll inevitably create memories with your loved ones that will last a lifetime. Like when our daughter saw her first freshly laid egg. Or how could I forget the time I watched my significant other chasing an aggressive rooster around the yard until she caught him and put the WWE Smackdown on him. Backyard chickens offer more than just eggs and fertilizer though. They provide an opportunity for education and a deeper connection to our food system. You and your family will gain a deeper understanding of where our food comes from. You'll be able to take part in the process of feeding yourself and those around you. So if you're sold on bringing home chickens this spring, the next step is to figure out how to protect them because just about everything, everywhere, eats chicken. We use a livestock guardian dog to watch after our flock. But there are a few things you'll want to think about before you bring one home. Be sure to check out this video, and Tuck Tuck and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.